Google where you actually supply the MAC address and Google will do a lookup in the database and give you what they believe is the correct coordinate and since uh, your uh, access point is usually up 24 hours 7 it, there is a good chance that if your city is big enough they will know where you are and you can know where your location is uh, with a 500 meter precision more or less uh, at least in our test. Uh, so you do all these extra requests, you get longitude latitude and of course if you're using Google what about uh, just asking for a map. So you actually the attacker just get a uh, nice map of where the router, the network is. So you have the WPA key, you have the network position, then you are all set, right? What about, who cares about WPA? You have the key. And who wants to see how it looks like in real? No one? Yeah. yeah, okay. Go for it? Okay, so this is a demo of our code, fully written in JavaScript. So you see in the step one we are doing a fingerprinting of the browser to know which kind of exploit we can use. Then we're going to port scan, find what kind of authentication we are using, it's a bug in Firefox, then fingerprinting the routers, injecting an XSS in this case and then we have to wait because it's an injected XSS in this case, in this SMC case. So we have to wait 20 seconds until it reboots and then we're going to in an invisible iframe open it and here's your MAC address and your key and this is actually the location of my own house. So if you, near, if you live near me in Palo Alto, happy to take a free beer, right? Uh, <laughs> wow, well, doesn't hurt to try. And uh, that's the end of our first story. Um, the second story is uh, about HTTPS. And HTTPS, is, so we're going to show you how we can actually try to make HTTPS a little bit irrelevant, same, same idea. Uh, it's a kind of complex uh, uh, attack, so I'm going to go uh, through five steps. First, I'm going to give you a background how a page is actually constructed, because that's where all the story begins. Then I'm going to discuss a little bit about um, what the cache injection attack is, and I'm going to show you what are the current defense in the browser against that, because there is some, and then I'm going to show you how we were able to bypass them, actually. So a web page starts with a HTML5. We all know uh, we all know that HTML file, sorry, not five. And we add to that a bunch of images, and we usually add a lot of JavaScript and maybe some Flash. And all this came from different origin. You don't see it in your browser, but you can have, for instance, a map from Google, some recommendation from Yelp, and even some information from Facebook. Uh, just yesterday, I, go, I went to Pandora and say, "Hey, this is a group you like on Facebook." Do you want to listen to it? I uh, didn't ask for it, but they're probably communicating with Facebook. So, to make the, 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 this faster, there is one key uh, mechanism into the browser, which is uh, the cache. The cache mechanism works as follows it's when you request a page, uh, this page might embed a JavaScript library. And so the browser is going to fetch it the first time. And if there is a proper header with this uh, JavaScript library, it will stay into the cache. And the header say, do not request me this file until a certain amount of time. So the next time you're go browsing a page, and this page uh, has the same JavaScript, then it's not going to download it, it's going to get it from the cache, right? And this is a fairly common practice. Uh, I, we, I did a little bit of crawling on the top Alexa top 100, 100,000 website and I see that 43% at least have an external JavaScript. Uh, can you guess what are, which is the most popular ex JavaScript library in the world right now? Google, Google which one of Google? Apps. Google Apps? Ads. Google Ads? No, you're wrong. Analytics. Google Analytics, you're right. And the second one is the jQuery. So the first one is Google Analytics by four followed by um, uh, jQuery and then you have SF, SWF object which is basically the library you use uh, to load uh, flash object into your page. Uh, Google Ads is fourth and then you have prototype which is another uh, JavaScript framework. So all of these guys are uh, JavaScript libraries shared. So some of them have different. Uh, Google Analytics is shared, um, you have one instance of Google Analytics shared by everyone and some people have their own version of jQuery, right? But uh, that all of them are uh, external uh, JavaScript file embedded into the page. So the attack story works like this. Uh, one time, the, uh, let's say in the middle, after uh, a huge work, you go back to a coffee shop and uh, you browse your email. So at that point, you are in an insecure network, let's say, as in the DEF CON. You connect your laptop and God knows what happened to you. Well, in this case, what we know for sure is that uh, there is a guy which is going to do a man in the middle. What happened during this man in the middle is you're going to request any page. Could be CNN, could be whatever you want. 
and the, the attacker will stop this page and will add a link to a JavaScript library which you didn't request. But it doesn't matter because you can, uh, you can modify any HTML page which is not over HTTPS. There is no integrity on that. And you, your browser will, after that, parse it and actually request it because that's his job. And at that point, instead of requesting it to the real server, the attacker will supply you a malicious version of it, right? So later you go back home and you might decide to write a blog post, like how awesome was the talk bad memory. And uh, you go there and you try to log in. And actually Blogger used um, Google Analytics, I guess, or jQuery, one of the two. And so you're going to, to go there and instead of looking for the real JavaScript libraries, what he's going to do is going to load the JavaScript, the poisoned JavaScript library. And this poisoned JavaScript library will not trigger any error because it's already accepted. And this malicious library will actually steal your login and password of HTTPS and you will see nothing. Doesn't matter if you move any location, as long as you didn't clear your browser cache, it will be in effect. And as I said, a single library is m used by many websites, which makes this attack so powerful is that Google Analytics is used by many, many websites. jQuery over CDN, Google CDN is used by many, many websites. So if an attacker is able to inject one of these libraries to you, he's going to compromise a lot of your HTTPS session. So you might say, hey, there is a defense against that, right? What is the defense against this one? Hmm? You have a uh, warning, remember? Every time you try to connect to a uh, sa site over HTTPS which don't have the proper SSL certificate, you get a warning. Did you attend the talk before? So, yeah, you have this warning, fairly strong warning, say, hey, this is not the correct certificate, the domain name is matched, do not click through it. Uh, the Firefox one has three clicks until you get, get to the point. So every time you try to, the attacker try to enter into a bad library, a malicious library, he will have to defeat this, uh, this warning. So how we defeat that? Well, the first thing is you can always trust the user to do the bad choice, right? Just trust the user to just ignore the warning and go through. And actually the user is kind of right in this case. So this is twitter.com, right? How many of you have a Twitter account? Okay, so many people. So if you go to twitter.com of HTTPS, it works. Now if you go to www.twitter.com, you get this. Why? Because the Twitter certificate has a, it's for twitter.com, not www.twitter.com, and actually EVCert prevents you from having a wildcard in it. So if there is, until they have two certificates in two different IP, then can't do that. Uh, same thing for YouTube. If you try to go to uh, YouTube, https.youtube.com, you get a Gmail, uh, Google certificate, so you get a warning. So the user is kind of trying to disobey this warning. How many of you ever click through this kind of warning? A lot of, yeah, a lot of people as well. See, you're trying to not pay attention to this kind of warning. And uh, even show, um, from quality show that actually 92% of the SSR certificate are, have a mismatch. So it's likely that at any point uh, the user will go through them. Uh, same thing if you have, if you think that the uh, positive warning like site identity give any idea and the user will pay attention to it. This is a Firefox study for Firefox 4. It's a heat map where users are clicking. Uh, the one you don't see is actually the, where, the one where you have a HTTPS information. No one is clicking on it. So positive warning don't work as well. This is a more detailed stat. And actually the more expensive the SSL certificate become, the, the less people are clicking on it and it's bigger, right? So, but it won't be a DEF CON talk if I'm just saying, hey, just trust the user. What about we try to trick the browser into not displaying the warning so it's actually more effective, right? So we're going to do that. Um, the first one is IE. So this is a warning you have for Internet Explorer. It's a pretty, pretty strong warning, right? You have two red shield and say, do not, it's not recommended to continue. It will happen, a lot of bad things to you and they hope that the user won't click. Of course he will click, but assume for a second the user is responsible like you and won't click. Then we can actually find a corner case where actually it's not display, or it's displayed in such a weird fashion that you might be confused. Do you want to see a demo of that? Yeah. Thank you. So here you go. So this is the page. We, we're going to click to the page with the bad warning, and this is the warning you get, this yellow bar on the top, and that's it. 
And what you can do is just display the content or display the content. There is absolutely no choice for you. And you're going to accept it, of course. And then when you go to Blogger, you're already dead by now, right? It's in the cache. And now the SSL certificate on the top is valid, as you can see. And if I enter a login and password, I'm not going to give you mine, but then you see we are displaying it. And this will last until your browser is cached. And the nice thing about this vulnerability in IE is that you can cache, when you click your display and secure content, we actually did cache five different libraries. So if you go to Twitter over HTTPS and you see the EV search on the top and we're going to do non-mixed content. This is not a warning because of the attack, but because on the bottom left there is uh, image over HTTP. So we're going to do fully uh, over HTTPS and you see the bar is green, everything looks secure. You enter your email and your password and guess what? Here you go. So no warning, no nothing and you get all your SSL conf session compromised forever. Or at least you change browser or clear your cache. How many people are cl clearing the cache? Everyone. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop asking questions. <laughs> okay, so we found a bunch of these. Uh, Microsoft asked ask us to actually do not explain you how we find them until they are all fixed. So we're not giving you any detail, we're going to show you a screenshot. Uh, this is one other inconsistency. This one is really weird. Uh, Basically, they show you the name is not correct and you have view certificate, but you don't have a, the, the, the right warning, so people might also be confused by this one, although I prefer the previous one. Uh, let's move to Firefox, right? So here is the Firefox warning. Uh, this one is different. They actually try to make it very painful to user by doing three click. So they hope that the user is not responsible but lazy, so he's not going to do three click to get to the page. And uh, actually, Firefox do a very, very good job uh, into displaying the warning. And sadly, we didn't find any uh, corner case where we are not able to display it. So we had to become more creative. How many of you ever heard about clickjacking? Raise your hand. Okay, half of the audience. So for those who never heard about clickjacking, just one slide. Everyone on the same page. Uh, this is clickjacking. So the idea is. The attacker display you a page like the best game ever. Uh, download this awesome movie, uh, Iron Man 2. Uh, what's the next new movie? Uh, Inception. You can click here to download it, and the user is going to do that. What happened under the hood is you have a uh, transparent div on top of it, which has another uh, input box. And when the user is trying to do something, what he will happen is will click on this invisible button and do something we will regret later. Of course here for Twitter uh, they have frame bursting defense so it doesn't work but just to give you an example. So you click and instead of clicking to download or start you're actually clicking on leaving Twitter. So that's how we solve the um, Firefox challenge is well sure we can't remove it but we can click jack it. And that's exactly what we're going to show you. So we were able to remove two out of the three clicks. Um, so I assume you have this, uh, you want to download something and you have a user argument so you click on it and actually you just click jack your warning and you see only the last pop-up. The big warning is completely gone and if I go to twitter.com, same as, as previously, you're going, oh, blogger, sorry, oops. If you go to blogger and enter your username and password, same, same story, the warning, the SSL is perfectly valid and you see the shirt on the top, the blue indicator for Firefox and you see the user and password. That's how you can do cache injection against uh, HTTPS. For the third part of the talk, uh, we're going to, I'm going to let Baptiste uh, show, it, show you how it works and uh, they are all yours. Thanks. So for the third part of this presentation, uh, I will show you how we can actually steal private data from users using friendly attacks. Friendly attacks is an evolution of clickjacking and scrolling attack. Clickjacking, just presented previously by Ellie, is a term coined by Jeremiah Grossman and Robert Hansen in 2008. Scrolling attack is a new attack showed by Paul Stone in the Black Hat Europe this year. This attack works as follows. In the first step, the attacker will double frame the target website. Here in this example, it will be the mobile version of uh, Yahoo Mail. In a second time, the attacker will use a browser feature called the anchor scrolling. This feature makes the page scroll automatically to a specific ID when adding it as a hashtag is a URL. 
So here, in this example, every email is, can be associated to a specific ID. 